Kia ora team and welcome to this episode of the Quality Antics Podcast. Now for this one, I've teed up a bit of a ripper interview. It actually turned out pretty freaking awesome. I'm sitting down here with David Mouse and Mac Dewa. Now, I'll explain really briefly how I know these two. Okay, so David Mouse, I uh, met him a while back. He's been to, he's a bit of a, a, a business, uh, what do you call it, a serial entrepreneur. He um, has his finger in many pies, loves to keep super busy, uh, super forward thinking. Um, yeah, and so I've, I've been interacting with him online and, and following his journey for quite a while now. And then I also caught up with Mac Dewar. Now he is a local Christchurch videographer, just like me. Um, and we've interacted a bunch and worked together and collaborated. Uh, but now Mac has been employed by David. Um, so we get into that. We dive into how that's all working and everything else. But we also just spin some yarns about habits, about uh, favorite movies, about um, flipping audio sets audible subscriptions that have gone on for way too long and a bunch of other topics um i just recorded this today but um and i'm just listening through to a few sections and it's already cracking me up um it was fun they kind of take over the interview midway through well it's not an interview it's just like a chat uh, and they throw some questions back at me which was a bit of a laugh as well so without further ado i've wasted way too much time on this intro here we go let's get into it um, kia ora boys, welcome to the Call Antics podcast. I'm here with David and Mac. Welcome lads, uh, how are you going? Yeah, good mate, thanks uh, Thanks for having us. Yeah, good, also good. Nice. <laughs> um, I don't know why I was expecting an elaborate story there, but <laughs> to kick off the podcast. Um, good to have you boys on, and the reason I thought it would be a bit of fun, uh, Mac, I've known you for a wee while through the videography game, and David, I've known you through the general business slash life game um but now your powers have combined and i'm like brilliant why don't i uh, get you both on and have a chat about what what what's going on and and how your powers are combining and uh what that's doing and all that jazz so um maybe i'll kick off to david first david fill me in about for for the listeners slash viewers uh who are you what do you do and and how are you and matt kind of working together uh, yeah, so uh, my name's David, and uh, I got a business called Alt Marketing. Uh, I've had it since 2015, but um, yeah, I've used um, video freelancers for the last few years, and uh, finally took the plunge to hire a full timer late last year. I think the commitment happened, and then uh, Max started a couple of weeks ago. So uh, that's how we are working together. Cool. Yeah, and uh, it's working together is a loose term. I would say I'm working for Dave, but <laughs> I mean working together collaboratively to. I guess it achieve a common goal of creating content and being able to market that content well. Nice. So yeah. is, at, at this stage, is David kind of clicking fingers, pointing, yelling, barking, those sorts of things, being like, get this edit done, come on. Is this the kind of... No, abs- <laughs> absolutely not. No, no. I've been uh, quite happy with the, the work output, actually. Cool. Mac, yeah, it's uh, surpassed my expectations. Oh, that's always good. Uh, that's good. That's good to hear. But I guess it's just con- constantly pushing the boundaries and finding a sweet spot between like having enough time but like getting enough done but also like enjoying the whole process as well um okay so you uh, rewind you mentioned you've kind of used some freelancers in the past videographers and then you said hey look what made you take the plunge from hey dabbling in the occasional uh connection with freelancers to um diving a bit deeper with video um yeah i had this guy resident do one for the preschool and just totally blew up. That Risden dude, I, I eh? That's dodgy, <laughs> dodgy, that's dodgy, the dodgy. Last uh, no more. <laughs> nah, seriously though. Um, for me, it's uh, about making things easier and you know making like workflow good. And it's it's nothing against freelancers. It's, yep. it's it's it was totally the right move to do at the start. But I guess um, now I just want to make it so that I don't know. It's just like the in house versus. It's just easier. Yeah, totally. know, It's just my personal preference. You Easy, know? Yeah. more efficient. Instead of having to go back and forth with like yeah. four emails to talk about a title, it's like you can just stand right next to them and talk about it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I sort of dabbled or experienced the difference with Dan, the designer, the graphic designer. Yep. And so sort of experiencing the contrast between freelance versus in-house. And um, I guess also just making that commitment to, to Alt 2.0, we're going to call it. Um, cool. It was just a big difference. So, yeah. Awesome. But as you say, you do have to balance that um, economic equation right mm. of output versus 
salary basically yeah so. oh totally and so straight out the gate though you guys you started to work together um what what are some of the projects i'm clicked to mac now what are some of the things you've been working on out the gate i see a lot more uh alt marketing content coming through the pipeline um some interesting new kind of concepts that you've been playing with uh talk me through those yeah so i guess we're sort of just trying to figure out systems at the moment um obviously because video is new for david um me working for someone else is also new because I spent the last two and a half years working for myself. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's basically sort of just we're in a, a teething phase, just trying to get things working out. Um, so at the moment, we started off with we've committed to one vlog a week, just to keep the people up to date with what we're doing here at Alt yep. and how things are evolving. Because cool. like it. Dave said, we're you know we're moving into a phase of Alt 2.0, which is sort of just. Uh, how would you explain it? We're just expanding, really, um, which is which is great. Um, so then we also have a few other sort of like alt marketing uh, video series. We've got the value ad series. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, it's kind of just like uh, useful tips that people could find helpful. Cool. They're kind of like small tutorials. Um, we have a marketing one Monday. Um, I guess you could probably explain marketing win Monday the best because that's sort of your realm. Yeah, I just love winning, right? So anything that I find that's uh, a good win, anything that uh, is you know marketing related or systems related that um, causes someone to spend money, basically, you yeah. know, and it could be a client, it could be someone else, like Wild Bean yesterday, you know, it's just emphasizing the wins, right? Cool. Yeah, love I think it. that's that's all we got going on at the moment. Jeez, it sounds like yeah. a lot already. Yeah, love it. Yeah, it's been full steam yeah which is nice yeah it's it been good it was first day i was like what can we do like mm. what, what what can we do? there was no real introduction yeah. i was just like let's get to work I was yeah like, yeah we're but, on but having that direction and having some things some some targets to hurt some video series that you're like committing to it's just yeah, i guess it is a really good way to like settle in dive and in, dive into it you've got to cr create some ideas obviously and yeah. then execute on those and then and then look back and be like, oh, that video was great. That video was terrible. Why? And pick it apart and rinse and repeat. And so it's really cool. So yeah. nice. No, it's been a good way to yeah start figuring out some systems and seeing how workflows work. And yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, a loose plan of attack. I don't know if you guys are all secret squirrel about this sort of thing, but like, what is the is the plan of attack to roll that through? I know I want to bring up vlogs in general and have a massive chat about vlogs um in a second. But like, what are what do you see the uh, the path in the next year, two year, um, in terms of alt? Are you yeah, elaborate a bit more about the the future focus and everything like that. I'll let, I'll let Any, you take it away. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to handle that one, man. No, you got that. Um, yeah. So as as you say, the vlog is a big part of it. Um, myself, I consume a lot of vlog content on YouTube, and so it made sense to have a value, you know, an offering, a service offering. A lot of people have tried doing vlogs, and um, it, it's pretty tough. So. I think there's um, an opportunity to sell a vlog or to, to um, yeah, local Christchurch business or brand. Um, for us, in the next couple of years, I think it's just going to be um, yeah, a combination of our own content to market ourselves and then client work and just finding that balance, right? Mm. And then using you know uh, our own stuff to, to plug into other things that I get involved in, right? Like preschool and whatever else down the road. So, yeah, vlog's the big focus at the moment. Cool. And why? Like, talk to me through. Talk me through both of your experiences with vlogs. David, you mentioned you like you've been a long consumer of vlogs. Um, how did that start? We'll start with you, David, and then we can kick over to Mac. Give you some breathing space and, and some thinking time. Thanks. Um, how did that begin for you? And and what are you currently consuming? Like, yeah, talk yeah. me through. Talk me through a good vlog that you enjoy. Well, I, I very the very first one I think was uh, Casey Neistat one back nice. in like probably twenty far out, maybe fourteen ish, fifteen somewhere around that time and i just started watching them i i found that there was an archive already so i just binged a whole bunch of them you're so good isn't um, it? Yeah. yeah like just so much talent and intrigue you know just just great content and um yeah i guess from there i just started watching a few more like the you know the likes of gary v and then found a few other random ones just in the suggested videos on youtube and before you know it you're like in the rabbit hole yeah you're in the you're in the vortex of content yeah. um there's yeah there's a couple that i'm following now like uh becky and chris this guy graham oh, graham stefan is becky and chris the one helicopter people yeah yeah oh, they're buzzy yeah. okay yeah continue, so continue. It's, it's just i reckon it's just fascinating right how you can consume content that's freely available on youtube yes there's some ads but for the most part it's free content um and just become inspired you know like just 
you know fizzing me up rather than bringing me down yeah like a, like a lot of other traditional media so yeah those guys um this guy graham stefan mac is it yeah graham stefan yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just there's, there's just some great content out there um and then i guess the main one that's sort of influenced it from a business aspect is ryan surhan oh. a uh, new york real estate agent that's got a extremely well done vlog um yeah I, I just think it's cool how you can sort of merge a passion project or a hobby with with business and with the vlog i think it does just that so you know instead of buying billboards you buy a vlog that's cool. sort of the basic theory and and what like you say that you're in, you're consuming these vlogs what do you think is in them that you can somehow walk away a bit happier with a little hop skip and a jump and you and maybe you've learned something like what what is it is it is the key is you going to a vlog for the entertainment factor or is it for a bit of education or is it for both or is it for something different like what do you see that you go for the, go to them for yeah it's not so much education that's probably the last thing you cool. know like okay. I, i'm not a fan of like the tutorial ones so much but you know i think entertainment is, is ultimately it ultimate uh, yeah, education, and inspiration, right? Cool. So like yeah, yeah. Peter McKinnon, for example, like he's just a, a funny guy, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's just talented, and you get used to his quirks and his little yeah, things. And yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it's just good content, you know. Okay. So rather than watching a sitcom, you watch a bit of that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Nice. Me? Yeah, Mac. Um, I guess the vlog started with Ben Brown. Oh, this is probably 2014, okay. maybe, yep. and then it transitioned to Nice Dad and all that stuff. But I guess for me. I, yeah, if I'm going to watch a vlog, I p- basically just watch it for entertainment purposes. Mm-hmm. But what I think is, I guess what we're trying to do is sell a vlog to a business because I feel like when you go and watch a nice that vlog, you don't necessarily watch it for his epic B-roll or whatever, right? You watch it because it's nice that and he has a personality. And I think that there is a huge opportunity for a business to have that personality there that people will come to and they can sort of associate that personality with the business. Yep. And it might be a super boring business like an accountant, but they might have this epic dude who has real charisma mm. that people are like, oh, you know? Jim Bob, oh, I love that and guy. It sort of yeah, just, and, yeah. it just, and it kind of just pops off. Yeah. Um, so True. I guess that's kind of what we're trying to do. Cool. Uh, it's just about finding that right person in the right business. Mm. Um, and then the content sort of secondary to that. Yeah. Yeah. But then as a business owner, do you, okay, I'm just playing it through in my head here. I'm, I'm loving the idea of a vlog. I like vlogs. I want to do one with my business. Um, Jim Bob is the name that I use for like someone, one of my employees, he's a character. He'll go well on film. It'll be great for my business. Is there an inkling in your mind about, oh, I don't want to build my brand or whatever, my the vlog series around me, a few other people, and Jim Bob, but then what if Jim Bob leaves? Like, will that tarnish? What are your thoughts on that, like, about people coming and going? Like, because, because it may happen in a business. Does that mean that the owner has to really take ownership and actually be in, in it a lot? Or, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? I uh, probably don't, don't really think about anything like that, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not I'm just being serious. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, I don't think those thoughts are kind of secondary to what the main goal is. And it's like, yeah, sure, if Jim Bob leaves, then you just make it work. Yeah, yeah. But, I, yeah, I've never actually thought about that. Cool. It's okay. kind of an interesting one, actually, isn't it? Relating to personal brand employees and who owns the content or the, you know, the goodwill that's been developed through that mm. employee developing it, right? Mm. So, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess, like, for us, it's probably likely going to be the owner or the consultant, you know, if it's a real estate agent or whatever. So, yeah. There probably won't be that issue, but but you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. But I agree with you though that that like businesses being able to tell their stories in a in a unique way, and it's like let's say it is accounting. Sure, they can talk about tips and tricks and all those sorts of things, but um, actually showcasing their personality and then the the audience falling in love with that person, and then when they come in through the door, it's already familiar. It already feels good. Um, and you can already maybe even crack into some banter um, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. I don't know if you want to be that casual, but you know, and, and it already feels nice, which yeah, which is pretty cool and pretty unique nowadays. Yeah, cool. It's, it's funny you bring that up. Actually, um, there's a, a couple of accountants up in Auckland that I follow, um, and they have they have done this strategy. Oh, they cool. have used content based marketing to um, develop a brand and personality, and so. Yeah, we we'll just do an unsolicited plug for Next Advisory, Luke Next and Phil. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so have, you, have you switched to them yet? Or are you already I, using I intend them? to, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, so you so haven't, even, so so you haven't even switched to them yet? No, but I'm still I still plugging. To. I'm right. still plugging, yeah. Good man. Yeah, but it's uh, a good example of how it's taken literally years for this to happen, and it still hasn't cool. happened. Yeah. Not enough, it will. Yeah. Probably will. Might. 
who knows <laughs> but it's not like an instant where, you know it's not just a immediate thing i don't believe so yeah. it takes yeah. time um someone or an industry that is absolutely doing going gangbusters in terms of video content seems to be real estate agents i feel like they are all or maybe the ones that just i see i feel like a lot of them are i don't know if it's because of the brands let's say I don't know, Bailey's or whoever it is, they're driving that or if it's the real estate agents themselves that are realizing that personal branding is key and they need to be out there and seen and seen and seen and maybe they just tr start with their iPhone or they start with whatever it is. But I'm seeing a lot more of, especially younger real estate agents coming through and they're like, they're, um, you know, they want to own their neighborhood in a way and be seen and be present and, and be recognized. Um, is that a, a space that you guys have noticed as well or is this, am I just crazy? Yeah. No, yeah, I've definitely noticed that. I think it's because the, the younger agents realize the power of video. Mm. Plus, it, it could also come from a fact that, like, uh, being a younger agent, it could be a good way for them to show off their personality on camera because people might not necessarily take them seriously because of their age. Yeah. Um, I think that's useful. Like, there's a there's a dude in, uh, in Wellington, his name's Scott Ledger. He's got a vlog that I've seen before. I think he works for Bailey's or Harcourt's, one of them. Yep. Um, and he must be like 23, 24 and you see a photo of the dude and you sort of make that initial, you know, first impression that you do, which you shouldn't, but that happens. Yep. And then you, you hear him talk on camera and you're like, oh, this dude actually knows what he's talking about. Like he's actually well-spoken, well-mannered, like dresses well. Um, and you're like, oh, okay. Like, you know, he, he knows what he's, he knows, he knows what he's doing. Yep. Um, so I think he's, he's done that really well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, uh, I, yeah, I see it a lot. Yeah. 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 David, have you seen it as well or no? Oh, I was going to disagree completely. Oh, I, I love um, this. I think that it's a very small percentage of the uh, real estate agent population, you know, like I think out of the it thousands of people around. probably is to be Yeah, you know, true. Like, There's probably a lot around. I, I just, it's one of my pet peeves actually. Like, I actually get tempted to get into real estate for this exact reason. What, well, because you don't think people are doing it well enough? No, uh, no. I think there's a massive opportunity and most of them are just dicks, like to be honest. <laughs> Sorry, it's... <laughs> rent but no careful, no no careful. but no quite, Unleash. Quite seriously it really is it yeah. really is an opportunity just waiting to happen so I, I love seeing these young guys get on there you know like a couple of the the vlogs that you've shown me there mac it's it's cool it's yeah. good and, and they will crush they will yeah. definitely make it work so because mm. i guess for the moment something's better than nothing a hundred percent yeah and i mean I, you just look at the older ones no offense to the older ones but you know they are just so traditional hyper traditional with their marketing and their, yeah. their branding so yeah yeah even a few years ago, I dealt with a few real estate agents and, and the kind of the theory was that they would, they wanted a video and that was part of their budget and sure, mm. a, a video alone, they're like, that's not going to sell the home, we need to do the print, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need mm. to spread out, everything's so thin, but um, yeah, interesting. But I guess I'm, I see a few here and there and I'm like, oh, everyone's doing it, but probably to your point, there's probably 30 agents in, in one little like set up here in Christchurch in a suburb and maybe one maybe yeah. is doing it um so yeah true maybe it's maybe it's just like the perception that we see a few online and we're like oh my gosh they're everywhere but yeah um, okay interesting there's this guy uh, i started following his name's boss okay his name's boss I think, I that's, think sick. that's what i thought I and thought, he's already won <laughs> <laughs> he's just won the game right yeah so uh yeah he's, well, got, he's got some video content and he's he's doing it so where's he from uh, here, Christchurch. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Shout out to Boss. Shout out to Boss. Shout out to Boss. Getting out there, yeah, young guy. Yep. Making it happen. So cool. It's cool. Brilliant. Um, let's keep rolling on, lads. Um, next question I want to ask you about is more around um inspiration. This doesn't have to be content slash media related slash video or anything. Like, who slash what inspires you? Um, now I'll give you some random examples so you can just keep pondering um and phase out of me for a little bit but yeah like i say it could be um you may find inspiration through doing some oil paintings in the evening you may find inspiration like listening to i don't know pavarotti in your car or uh, audio books or it may be certain video content um like i know for me personally it's it's funny especially in the video game people are like, i don't consume other people's videos or whatever but i honestly the more i consume the more i'm like oh I hate that mm. or I, I love that and, and all of a sudden I do my own thing with it sometimes maybe even not but I like I love just seeing what other people are up to it's really it is really inspiring um, but that's related to video which is like what I'm obsessed with but it doesn't have to be that uh, thoughts 
I'm the same as you. Okay. Exactly the same. Yeah, it's like I consume a lot of content, although sometimes it's it's probably to my detriment because <laughs> what's up? No, no, no. I'm just laughing. I'm just listening, but oh, like so trying to see if we're still recording. Oh, right, here. Right, no, that's a, you're in <laughs> podcast mode. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Because sometimes you see something like, oh my God, that's so good. Oh, I, I know. could never do that. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, a lot of my stuff comes from other video content. Um, yeah, like you said, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I don't like that. And you sort of just put your own twist on it. Yeah, um, cool. But apart from that, I don't really get any inspiration from anywhere. Sometimes you hear a tune and you're like, yeah, I know, like, some, Ooh. you know, I, 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 could, I could work with that. Yeah. A um, good tune. Oh, so good. But apart from that, that's about it, really. Yeah, other, other people's content. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. David? Uh, yeah, this might sound a little bit cheesy, um, but uh, Gina, my wife. Oh. I get a lot of inspiration from her. Shout out to Gina. Yeah. Good, good plug for you. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I, and what I mean by that is that she is quite different than me. Like, she is calm and, like, brings this level of, uh, you know, it, it's just the opposite of me. So, mm. so I get a lot of confidence from that. Cool. Uh, and then also, like, I mean, that's the sort of inspiration behind Alt 2.0, right? Like, cool. Like, backing me as an individual. Yeah. So, you know, that's 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 quite cool. And then also other um, you know, content out there as well, like that I find that quite helpful, like the Sir Hunt stuff and the Gary Vee and all all that sort of usual stuff. But um yeah, I think who you follow it really does matter, you know. Like I just think of an example of a guy that I follow that um was documenting the amount of books he's reading this year and he's got like a list, just like an iPhone note list and I'm just like, you know what, I might get on that wagon, you know? Cool. So like instead of watching a like some other form of irrelevant content like i find that's really quite cool mm, yeah love it yeah I, I really want to consume more books and i find that over the summer period when i go away i'm like in deep into my kindle and just love it it's like amazing because you go to bed at like 8 15 because it's pitch black and you're like and especially if you settle into a good book oh my gosh but um i this is classic me i signed up for audible um the yeah. audio books and my wife, Nicole, was like, you've got to listen to the E-Myth Revisited. Like, is it Revisited? I think, yeah. Um, this this like, audio book. I'm like, you've got to listen to that. It'll be great. And she walks dogs um, for a chunk, good chunk of her day. So she's like, I always, she's desperate for podcasts and for content. And she's like, I just can't get into it. Like, it's just a bit too much. She wants to kind of drift in and out of it. Whereas this, you kind of need to be focused. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. Then I just keep paying. And then another month goes by and I keep paying. And I, I totally forget about this. And then I'm like, what's the login? Because I got it set up for her. And I was like, so yesterday I got onto it because she sent me an email being like, you have four books in credit. Because I noticed probably two months ago and downloaded a couple of books. And I'm like, oh, four books. And then I went, oh, I need to cancel. But thank God it was easy to cancel. But they were like, are you sure you don't want to use your four credits? And I was like, oh, maybe I will. So I talked to a few people at the gym and they gave me four like really random books that I would never have chosen about leadership, about like oh, a bunch of different things. And I'm semi-excited to to chew into those but um, every night my routine is this is off track but I'm just talking about reading here I'm ticking through books I love sitting down and going to bed a little bit earlier to, tr to read if you binge Netflix too late in, at night and then you're falling asleep on the couch there's no way I'm going to read I try and it's like four words or you're like wait this is the same page as last night like four times or four nights ago um, do you read it all Mac? Um, it's funny you say that because I did the same thing with Audible. Oh, no. downloaded <laughs> it. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> downloaded it, signed uh, up. Um, like listened to two books, then sort of forgot about it, and then I bought a Kindle because I was like, yeah, I'll get into reading <laughs> over summer. <laughs> and then went to um cancel Audible and it says you have six credits. Oh yes. <laughs> so I guys yeah, I used them and I got like I got six books to read in a Kindle. But yeah, mm. I I do I do read sometimes. Um, sometimes being loose yeah but um <laughs> yeah i guess I, i'm into like personal finance books mm, cool kind of strange we were talking about this last night actually yep. yeah um topic. yeah not so much uh fiction stuff uh, fiction yeah, so non-fiction fiction fiction idiot yeah, uh, yeah. hasn't yeah. had mac has not had enough he hasn't had four coffees so far today so no, just one uh, uh, decaf. yeah yeah <laughs> coming back to one that decaf right? life uh, um i struggle with really intense books when i'm trying to sleep though like when i was in europe i downloaded this book called uh on the spot it's called um it was all about pretty much influence all about like pretty much how to influence other people when it was like statistically based it was all about research and about like having 
a higher price and then going to a lower price and then what that does to the psychology of the customer and all these just things. I was like, oh, that was pretty interesting. Um, and tried to read it when I got back from Europe because I didn't read much when I was in Europe. And I'm like, man, this is just too mecky. Like, it's just a bit too meaty. I just want to read about mm. this guy who's bashing the bad guys and like winning the chick and all that. I don't know. Like, yeah. some more mellow stuff <laughs> before bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. weird. Timing's important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we've gone through who inspires you. Um, some beautiful answers there. Um, Gina will be stoked with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> big shout out to my wife, Nicole. She also inspires me. Um, <laughs> yeah, shout um, out to my girlfriend, Sam. Also a huge inspiration. <laughs> uh, um, okay, let's just keep kicking around. Uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of movie content slash TV series that you, that you think are worthwhile consuming, um, what are you a fan of, and what do you think is overrated? Uh, any any audio go 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 go. Uh, you want to go first? Uh, we were talking about this last night actually. Oh. Con- uh, video, you know, series and movies and stuff. And yep. how generally, like most stuff is shit, right? Generally, yeah. most movies, yep. I believe, like yep. they're most mostly mediocre. Like, there's a couple that stop you in your tracks. Like we're talking about, you know, ones like Snatch or Reservoir Dogs or Gina's favorites, um, The Departed. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I I I do like senseless movies as well, like Bad Boys Two. It's probably my favorite. <laughs> nice. But yeah, occasionally you, like Big Fish. That's another random one that I Ooh, love. It's I haven't quite seen a deep, that. Like mysterious kind of weird movie, but. You know, I mean, I just watch the whole spectrum, really. Like, I'm watching Gossip Girls at the moment, truth be told. Nice. XO, <laughs> XO. XO. <laughs> so I was funny. a fan. Yeah. It's funny how you can get into complete nonsense, though. Yeah. Isn't it? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I brought up in the in a recent podcast with um, Ellie, Loving Ellie's Belly. She was like, at night, for her, mindless TV mm. is, like, it's stupid and it's lame and it's whatever, but it just, like, is, is great for her. And that's what, yeah, I'm the same. I, I hate that stuff. But actually, when you sit down and watch a couple of episodes, you're like, damn, I'm in. And mm-hmm. it's just pretty laid back and chill. But yeah. What about you, Mac? Um, I'm feeling some French nouveau, <laughs> freaking trippy one nah, movie we've never nah, heard that'd of. Be, that'd be Dan, right? <laughs> yeah, it would that'd definitely be Dan. Um, I don't know. I kind of like some true crime stuff. Like I just watched a doco on Netflix called... I think it's called The Killer Inside, Aaron Hernandez. It's about um oh, Patriots yes. wide receiver or whatever he was who killed his girlfriend's sister's husband or something ridiculous like that. Mm-hmm. It was um that was solid. Good. Uh, good to cheer. Watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you enjoyed Cheer? Yeah, super good. Have you seen Cheer as well? No, I've seen it popped up. Oh. So. It's, it's You're missing out. Surprisingly great. Yeah. I heard Just Rizzo well shot, it. good wee story arc and oh, yeah, yes, I like so, it. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> and uh, 1917 Just oh, saw that recently ha- A fan or not a fan? S- Epic S- Exceptional ah. It's a stunning film You'll really appreciate it okay. Purely because the, the whole thing's made out To look like it's one shot Yeah I don't know if, if you've heard that before No but I heard it I watched it behind the scenes Briefly on it And I yeah. was like What the hell are they trying to do here? Yeah but so when When they shot it They Before they actually started Building any of the set They had to do like Walkthroughs Because each shot was going to be eight minutes. So they had to figure out how far they would walk in eight minutes mm. so they could make sure that the trenches were long enough and yeah. stuff. Wow. Real interesting. Yeah, yeah, buzzy. So, yeah, good film. Good, good film. Nice. It's, yeah, it's like a two hour or three hour movie, but it covers a time frame of like 16 hours or something like that. Oh, wow. 12 hours, yeah. So it's interesting how they do that. Because isn't the story around getting a message to. So is it just the journey of some messenger boys or yeah, like messenger people? Basically, that's uh-huh. literally what it is. But what happened? Oh, well, I can't say that because we're on the film. Okay, okay. But yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. But are you are you in like from the get go? You're like, oh my gosh, are they gonna make it? Like the whole time is Big it time. epic? Oh, okay. Because oh, I can't say anything without giving away any. <laughs> the trailer's spoilers. good. I watched the trailer. Oh, I haven't even seen ah, that. Yeah, and where are you? Where are you watching this movie? This was watched at the. Int X. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're paying your... Yeah, paying you're your down, $17. You're not, you're not yeah. ripping it illegally or no, anything? No, no, of course not. No, we don't do that here. <laughs> nice popcorn <laughs> and a fat. No, we don't. We don't. Cool. Now, the movie experience is pretty pretty legit, but I just never bloody do it. No, I just neither. never do it. You've got so much on your laptop or your TV. It's just like... Eh, There's something just... nice about sitting down in a movie and actually like being fully engaged yeah you know oh totally mm, that's a good point totally because otherwise you're just sort of checking your phone uh, and you're, Ooh, what's on instagram totally. Ooh, I've got a message totally yeah. um let's talk me through you've just you're just fresh off monday night beers uh it's currently tuesday a.m 
Um, and you said, oh, he said, oh, no, 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 not on. We can't do on Monday. We've got Monday night beers. What on earth is this? Please explain. Uh, yeah, so I guess part of our traditions or rituals here, we uh, have a bit of a team meeting and some beers on Monday afternoon. Cool. Uh, it kind of stemmed from me uh, having Madison on, my daughter on Friday. So yep. Friday would be the traditional option, but, you know, Monday's good as well. Monday's yep. great. Surprisingly yeah. good. When it hits 3.30... Beers are on. Ah, it's so, on. Okay. All you hear is that sweet noise of that Heineken, <laughs> that Heineken <laughs> bottle coming off. Um, so you, but you say team meeting. So is it like, hey, look, I've got an agenda and we're wanting to tick through a few things while having a couple of casuals, or uh, yep. is it, yeah, yeah, is that yep. pretty much how it goes down? Yeah, it, it's been a bit loose and it is a work in progress. But the goal is to have an agenda that we do go through, and um, yeah, we've, we've come up with some good ideas in the past. Just, just through the casual approach, not the agenda, but yeah, there, there, there will be a format going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, something I'm really interested in, so I just want to pick both of your brains on, is time management. Um, so I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but I want to know because I want to manage my time better. Um, and I get hassled by my wife, Nicole, all the time because I'm like, uh, I've got a diary here. I have a notebook here. I have a Google calendar here. I have, I don't know, something else probably somewhere else. Um, and an app downloaded on my phone that does the same thing that I, and I struggle to kind of tee it all together. My The go-to is Google Calendar um, because I feel like I can just dump things on there and it just seems to work. But I, I love the paper copy um, and I love random little notebooks uh, with to-do lists on it. Uh, what are your strategies slash like methods for planning your days but also like and in a way, by planning your day, you are creating a little to-do list, or maybe you're not. Maybe I don't. I don't know. How do you? How do you guys manage that? Good, great question. Because we've actually got a pretty good system for it. Currently. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, this so is like, not pre-planned. No, <laughs> right. no. But I guess for business-wise, David and I we have a shared notes. We yep. have a shared note in the notes app. Yep. Um, and he will just it has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It has AM, PM, and then he will just add things into that with like a little tick box. Yep. So it's like say it's Wednesday PM, it's like edit the vlog with the tick box. I know that sweet. And any any time he updates it, I get a notification. So I go in and check it. Uh-huh. It's very seamless. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's 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 been a good win. Um, other than that though, I'm pretty pretty bad. Pretty pretty. I'm trying to figure it out actually. Uh, mm. Speaking of Audible, I'm reading or listening to this book called Indistractable, and it's got some good hacks in it. I just started that Did last you? night. Yeah, yeah. How good that was is one it? of the books I got recommended. Okay. Yeah. You guys could have like a, a, a reading party or yeah. something. Yeah, cute. I don't know if you're up to the bit where it, uh, <laughs> that'd be cute, wouldn't it? <laughs> Chapter six. <laughs> oh, ASMR. <laughs> um, I got recommended that book, but then they also said, "Oh, maybe you shouldn't read that because you use your phone for like a million things. Like maybe mm. maybe you shouldn't be on your. Uh, I don't know, but I love the thought of, I don't know, being able to manage distractions a bit better. So yeah. okay, sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, just t- yeah, slash hack. It, it gets up to the um, section where it's got like practical sort of advice on on what to do and yep. you know just as an example this one thing is just having a um you know a sign on your computer or desk that it's like i'm i'm in focus mode here don't don't mess with me you know like it, it seems like kind of rude in one way but like practically it's it's really quite a good is, idea is it? that totally. for yourself or is that for, for people? other for other people, <laughs> for other people so they yeah, know yeah, like not to bug you you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. um especially like with creative people i think like if you're in sort of that zone like you know it, yeah it's, it's a good book Long story cool. short. Okay, cool. Are you through it? Are you uh, finished? No, I'm about it? halfway through. Oh, cool. Three quarters cool. way through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, I mentioned two things. One of them is Trello. Have you guys used Trello before? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thoughts, um, thoughts on that one, Matt? Um, yeah, we kind of set it, I used to set it up like you set up HubSpot. Oh, yeah. And you had the three sections, mm-hmm. all the five sections or whatever it was. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we set it up like that and it was, uh, it was pretty useful. But um, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm just d- dabbling with it at the moment with the team at, at the German, like just collaborating on projects and figuring out where things are at. And, and if you use it to the extent that some of the team are using mm-hmm. it, where they, you can really dive deep into each little piece and have checklists and have dates mm-hmm. and have everything. And mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, we there's a lot to this. And I don't know if I'll because it has an app that seems reasonably straightforward and the desktop. And I'm yeah, I'm yeah, I'm interested by that. But um. Yeah, interesting. I just wondered if you ever used it before, because yeah. it, it's a, yeah. something I'd only been introduced to this week, and I'm like, oh, is it going to be a game changer or not? I don't know. I've tried using it, um, just just couldn't get into it. I've got yeah. a few friends that just rave about it, yeah, use yeah. it um, extensively in their business, but we we use HubSpot, and that's sort of been the 
substitute. I guess they're not quite the same, but uh, they do have some similarities. So yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I'm really interested. I want to ask all my guests on this podcast uh, what you do for fun. Like this is the quality antics podcast. So if you're <laughs> if you're wanting to get up to some antics, like what are the things that you like to do that um, I don't know, get you going. That, that if you've got a bit of spare time, maybe just by yourself, maybe with friends, I don't know. But what really like, what really gets you vibing? What, what what's a really good time for you personally? You go for that one, Mac. Yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> I've actually, like Mac's got an answer. I've actually recently like, just gone into mountain biking. Oh, okay. And I'm really enjoying it. Imagine. So talk me through this whole journey. Okay, backstory. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> when I lived in Wellington, I had a. I had like a mount, like a mountain bike that was converted into like an e-bike, so I could get up the hills. Yeah, the hills are steep. Anyway, l- about halfway through last year, it got stolen. Oh. Insurance paid it out, and I got this real nice, like giant, um, like electric mount, electric mountain bike. But it's more of kind of like a commuter bike than it is like a legitimate mountain bike with yep. like decent yeah, suspension yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, gotcha. So I was like, oh, okay, I've got this bike. Uh, I may as well use it. So I just started going to Bottle Lake. And that's sort of it, really. Cool. That's sort of where I'm at. Cool. And I'm kind of... Uh, and now I just consume a whole bunch of mountain biking content on YouTube. <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's real weird. I love it. There's a whole new like world out yeah, there to explore like, once wow. you can... Oh, I'm going to watch this cool video. Like, oh, this, what, what's a derailer hanger? And <laughs> what's a dropper post? And also you're like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So Bottle Lake, you haven't yeah. hit up the adventure park or you're planning on it or no? or Well... It can kind of go two ways. I can sound really lazy saying this, or it's quite practical. The first being, you can't take e-bikes up the uh, gondola. Yep. But then, contrary to that, you could say, why don't you just bike up, you yep. lazy piece of shit. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so, no, I haven't been up yet. Yep. And I, my probably, like, I could probably ride that. I think there's a green trail, but I don't think I'd be able to ride anything else, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds like there's some pretty gnarly trail, like pretty epic trails. Yeah, there. yeah. I've if watched you multiple break videos. Yourself. Yeah, if you want to break <laughs> yourself real good. Yeah. But yeah, that's sort of that's sort of me at the moment. Mountain biking, I I dabble in some cooking, oh. but that's more of like a relaxation nice. sort of thing. But whatever. When you mountain bike, are you no headphones, just listening to you going? <laughs> I better use some there. Or um, <laughs> or are you like yeah? What are you? Are you listening to a book? Are you just no, nothing? No, just nothing. Cool. I think it's because I think you've I've seen you you've gone mountain biking yeah. before, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess like sporadically, you can't really focus on anything else. You yeah. can s- you can only really like focus on what's ahead of you and make sure you don't like hit that berm wrong or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I would love to be cranking tunes full volume when I'm flying down a hill, but then if someone's like, "Hey, I'm, I'm just pa- down I'm here," passing, yeah, I'm I can't you. hear a thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've I've, I've definitely terrifying. thought about listening to music before because I was like, "Oh, you could get some sick tunes on and go for a bike." Yeah. Um, there's also something about being like disconnected yeah. from everything. Yeah, that's really yeah. nice about it. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Cool. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's a good wholesome answer, Mac. I, I really struggle <laughs> in this regard, actually. I um yeah, I, I just don't really have a doing things for qu- fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't what? seriously. <laughs> I know, I know. It sounds a bit weird <laughs> saying it out loud, but uh yeah, I mean I just love working. Like I love cool when um, you know, like Jenna and I can chat about work and plans and stuff and it just sounds like really sterile saying it out loud like that, but I don't no, know, it's cool. just like my sort of passion and like I've dabbled in hobbies, I guess. Like I like cooking and I love traveling. Like that's a hobby, I guess. But on a regular basis, like a weekly or daily basis, yeah, I don't really have anything that's a uh, go-to. Yeah, you know. So you love your work so much, but then also the other thing you enjoy is maybe spitballing slash chatting with Gina. Yeah, hundred percent stuff. Yeah, yeah, and cool. like talking about new things we could do, or um, yeah, like it sounds really alcoholic, but yeah, I definitely enjoy having a few drinks in the sun. You know, oh, it's like cool. a legitimate hobby, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And drinks of choice, what are they? I'll take anything really. Um, <laughs> yeah, like like the the brewskis, they're good. Yeah, yeah. What? So you'll like be you go straight from a gin to a Heineken to a, oh, a Red Bull I, vodka? No, no, no. Oh, no, that's where oh I you said anything? Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no. Don't. By the way, don't go uh, Red Bull vodka and then go for a run. By the way, <laughs> I made that mistake once and it was not pretty. <laughs> Gold. But uh, yeah, you got beers to gin and tonics, not not the other way around. Oh, yeah, right. Beers the gateway. Right. Can line, you, can line you, the stomach. Can yeah. you tell me the story behind the Red Bull vodka and a run? <laughs> yeah. Um, why, why did you decide to go for a run after that? Uh, it was a while ago, and um, it wasn't actually Red Bull. It was um, this energy drink that came on the market oh, briefly? Just a yeah, yeah, one. You know the one. Yeah, and so um, yeah, we had a few of those floating around the office, and so yeah, crushed one of those, and then. I had a run planned, so I thought, oh, this makes sense. You know, energy and running, it's, it should be good. But yeah, just just went horribly bad. 
of sweating, nausea. It just wasn't wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. Back in my running days. <laughs> Crazy. What, what about yourself? What are you Ooh. getting? Because I know that you're into your CrossFit. Yeah. Um, Love that. Being at 64 and stuff. Yep. Um, anything else? Uh, yeah, mate. Oh, the, the physical activity is a freaking massive one. Like, man, like the the clarity slash like just amazing mm. feeling you get after a workout like i think maybe there's something wrong with me but i love like being in the trenches and like oh my god i'm about to die you know like just mm, feeling yeah. like you're putting in some work here and then you finish and it's just like like nicole um my wife she's just started at the gym and she's like 6 a.m classes where i'm gonna fit in and because she's with a busy day she's just at, at, at the end of the day she doesn't want to go to the gym at six or seven at night um which i i appreciate that she's realized so she's committing to a few days a week at the morning so we went this morning um and man when you finished an insane session you're driving home it's all looking beautiful and you've had a shower and it's like now i'm gonna kick off my day i've already yeah. like smashed that out i felt man so i do love that but um fpv drones is oh. another another little Did hobby Did you bring that with you where the drone we're here. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Oh, disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can uh, let's talk later. But yeah. yeah, that was something that I'm like, oh man. Like I've gone through phases of being like, I want to be more uh practical slash handy around the house. Uh mm. Nicole will be listening, she'll be loving that. But <laughs> I, I'm just that's just not my thing. Yeah. I'm um I measure three times, cut once, and it's wrong. Uh, I'm that kind <laughs> of guy. So I'm like, uh just why why try and force it too much? But um the FPV drone thing, I saw a few videos around and then the more I looked into it, I was like, oh, drones for me were like a thing that I kind of did occasionally with work and then like didn't want anything to do with. So this was like a creative outlet where I could have fun flying them, but there was no like commercial like aspect to mm-hmm. it. Sure, I'll buy things and, and it, as it's a business expense, but... Um, Not for business. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, like maybe that's what I guess the plan is to occasionally like use that and, and integrate that into some of the videos that I do with businesses and brands. But for now, it's like, well, learn the skills, tee up something with dad and have fun with him trying to, because he loves all that sort of stuff, just cool. building something together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so probably something. Have you started building, can we... Do you mind if we talk about you? Yeah, have fine. you started building a drone yet? Nah, not nah. at all. So you're still rocking that Mobula 7? Yeah, well, I lost that oh. the, like a week or two ago. So um, <laughs> I was absolutely on cloud. RIP. I was on cloud <laughs> nine, like loving it and thought I had everything mastered. And I was getting way better. Like it literally, I was like, why did I sign up for this hobby? Why did I buy all this stuff? Because you have to go into your laptop and program and like tweak and do all these things to get this little baby <laughs> one working. <laughs> And I I did something so stupid that I don't even want to say on ear um, when I was just programming. When what, Oh, yeah, long story. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what is going on? Why is this not working? But figured that all out. Had a had a blast flying and then took it down to my local school. I said this on like one of my little like solo podcasts and then just flying, flying in the middle of a field and then just psh, terrible signal. Um, couldn't find it anywhere. Just disappeared. Wow. It just wow. disappeared. And luckily, it's like 170 bucks or something for that bad boy. But yeah. like, still, it's just a bit dusty. Um, God, those yeah, the the FPV looks like so much fun when you get good at it. Yeah, it's that it's that in between yep. period. Like I look at some of Josh's stuff, and I'm like, oh my God, how is that even possible? Yeah, it's cool. And yeah. then and then that's the thing we're talking about inspiration, like. Uh, I saw him playing around with it a while ago and I was like, lame. Like, I just don't want anything to do with it. It looks mm. like I don't want to dedicate my time to that. And then a few months went down the track and I was like, oh, all of a sudden that was like, interesting to me. Yeah. So I hit him up and he's helped me a bunch. But like getting a buyer controller, that was my first step. I just bought a controller and then watched a few videos. But it's just like get the simulator and practice, practice, practice. And you can crash all you want, look like an idiot and it's just fine. So that's like, and I watched a few videos where there would like Sawyer Hartman's like, I did 120 hours in the simulator. I'm like, yeah. that's a long a lot, time. A lot of time. Yeah. Like, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. But like, um, yeah. So guess what we're doing after this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> we're going straight on to Google. <laughs> but yeah, uh, nah, it's good fun. So we can chat about it afterwards. But yeah, um, sounds good. that's something that you can just do that's like not work, but it, like, mm. yeah, it's just something that you can kind of go and relax. I used to jam the PlayStation a bunch. Uh, there was a phase there where I would come home from work or whatever and then chip away on the playstation and, and hang out with your mates virtually and like um nicole was like hates that she's like you're not actually hanging out with them but man i talked to them more when i was gaming i talked to them every day yeah. what are you up to and all that stuff um but 
that was nice because and yes, I see super rugby players and professional athletes do it all the time where they they're on Fortnite or they're on something because they train, 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 and they kind of want something to escape or they mm. just want something to not think about whatever they're training. But um, when you're up till like two in the morning, a lot of the nights it's like, yeah, this isn't good. Yeah, yeah, fair, nice, yeah. nice, cool. Yeah. Um, anything else that you guys want to get out on the ear? This is like one of the main inspirations. I've never said it on the podcast, but this kind of came about um, a while ago um, when my nana passed away and at her funeral, I'm going deep here, at a funeral, people were just talking about stories as people do at funerals. And I was like, man, I wish I had sat down with nana and just spun a yarn and mm-hmm. recorded the whole thing mm-hmm. and just had like her thoughts and like for the record like had it had some stuff down and i'm like i'm gonna do that with my mum and dad i want to hear their full life story mm. recorded um so that one day when maybe they're not here that i can l- listen to that and and like enjoy it it's like a cool thing not not putting some creepy thing about you guys not being here for long but like um this is a as a cool way to document hey this is where i'm at this is what i was thinking um, and then in two years time like I've said in the past it may be the same in ten years time it may, you may be like man that was me at the start that was me when oh like that second version and then from there it went all these different places like it's just a cool thing yep. any other thoughts pondering um, quotes you got anything oh I just love that philosophy as well you know like when you did the vlog a week last year was it yep. yeah that, um, year before that definitely inspired oh was it year before yeah yeah wow yeah, yeah. time flies early adopter <laughs> really, really absolutely yeah. no seriously big time, big time. Rizzo is an early adopter <laughs> and that inspired me to um, I guess document a little bit more and then you know with Dina and I doing the vlog as well that was a similar Ooh, sort of a we need to bring that up uh, yep. concept cool to have something to look back on and uh, remain, you know because it's really hard I, I mean me personally it's uh, not a strength of mine taking photos and documenting stuff so yeah. By having that schedule in place, it's um, it's been cool. Cool, Matt. Um, I guess for me, one thing I've learned recently is that you don't have to share everything. Mm. Like I went camping maybe two weeks ago, and I made a little edit, but no part of me felt compelled to share it because it was just like this really nice moment between mm. me and my girlfriend. Yeah, cool. Um, and that also sometimes life is a little bit better without social media. Mm. Yeah. So. Did you go off the grid for this trip? Yeah. In terms of... Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've sort of just been off the grid in general for a while just because I've just been exploring life kind of without it and not sharing so much. It's been quite good. Mm. But I do do like sharing stuff, but just not everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds kind of... Does that sound cliche? I don't know. No, cool. Um, I I was like, mean, let's wrap this baby up. But now I'm like, now I'm like, Let's wait, keep it going. We, we have not talked about David, your, your vlog. Talk me through that. And you kind of just briefly did, but, um, talk me through the motivations behind that, the trials, the tribulations, like what, what's been fun, what's been really challenging and all that jazz. Yeah. I mean, ironically, we are a little bit derailed at the moment. We've missed, uh, we've missed a few weeks actually. Yep. We committed to a 12 week, um, season one, I guess you'd call it. Yep. And, um, yeah, there's there's just uh, content relating to like our you know family life, business life, um, travel, and um, yeah, it was, it was it was fun. It was definitely one of those things that you think is impossible, but then when you see that line in the sand and say like every Sunday night we're posting, um, it it was cool. Kind of like going to the gym, right? Like it's yeah. hard at the time, but then you look back and go like, yeah, that was that was good to do that. Mm. So we've got a sweet new intro. Uh, Ooh. Courtesy of Mac. Courtesy of the old marketing video <laughs> team. Yes. Yeah. So where it goes from here, I'm not sure. We're just, you know, even just the hardware limitations, right? Like, you know, dumping the footage. To totally. The laptop would crash. And so it's like, oh, geez, like, how, <laughs> where are we going with this? You know, like, are we going to keep going? Or, yeah. Um, as I say, it's great having them to look back on. It's just persevering, I think. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, that's, yeah, you've brought up some interesting points in terms of like, uh, I love the concept of time constraints or like having it, having the deadline there. Mm. And some people like creatively, I know uh, that I've spoken to, they hate the deadline. They don't want the deadline. They want to just have their time mm. to do their thing and like, and not be rushed. But I just find personally that, and I've just learned this all through high school and university, obviously I'm not the one of those people when, Oh, this assignment's due in December and it's February. I'm not working on that bad boy till no. mid December. Um, like you know, like I just I, l- I love the pressure of of like 
knowing maybe sometimes I don't pull my best work out, which people could argue. Mm. And I just love the, I love having a clear date. Like, like the, me having the vlogs was another thing where I wanted a certain date for it to come out. Um, and loving that pressure and because all of a sudden you've got to make something happen at, at a certain time, which is, which is cool. How, how are you finding it now uh, a couple of years on? Like, do you look back on that content frequently or in, not, infrequently? Not or? frequently at all, but no. I have, I really want to, I was just driving here thinking, man, I just need to upload a little video and just in terms of people who have probably maybe following along then and like, well, what the hell's happening now? Cause I haven't really put up much. And, um, but when, every time I watch one, I'm like, man, that is me. And I'm always like, I want to, I want to keep doing this because it is, like you say, it's so cool to look back on. And sure, it was at times stressful or hard on a Sunday night or whatever it may be when you're editing. But like, yeah, I think the the reward, you've always got to think about that, like just mm. just having, documenting things and, and recording things, it's, it's, it's nice. But then obviously, like Max said, like there's times where I'm like, man, I, the, I do not want to touch a camera and I'm loving life without it. Like I went to Totranui over a Christmas and I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to take a couple of photos, great, but like, I just want to chill because I'm going to be doing a lot of filming this year. And then get there and the kids there are like, are you going to do a video? Are you going to do it? Oh, we love your videos. And I was like, oh... <laughs> But then I'm like, I suppose I could film a couple clips. And then all of a sudden, I'm like still editing. Even if it's like a little one-minute video, I'm like, uh, like it was fun. And I flip and love it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. But. Do you ever get times where you're like, nah, I just can't be bothered filming anything? And totally. Then, and, then in, and then in like two weeks, t- like say you go on a trip and you're like, nah, I can't really be bothered filming anything. You get back two weeks later and you have like four clips and you're like, oh my God, I wish I filmed everything. Oh, yeah. Like all totally, the time. Totally. Like, totally. Oh, That's wish, the compromise. I wish I could it? remember that. Yeah. It's, and it's like sometimes it's like even just like a cell phone clip is enough to just sort of just like remember that moment just a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sort of like all it needs. But for me, it's a lot of it's around the uncomfortableness of filming in certain situations. <laughs> like 100%. If pushing through that, which which I know for a fact, like even uh, at the gym where I do some work there, um, they're like, oh, I could interview some of the members. And I'm like, uh, uh. I know your name. That's it. Like, I don't, I, I don't want to be like, hey, how are you going? How's the training going? Like, I don't want to be camera right in their face. Yeah. I just personally feel that awkwardness from them because they're like oh man this i'm not feel comfortable and i don't want to put them in an uncomfortable position i never want to do that to anyone but then like sometimes amazing yeah. things happen from sometimes from those situations so it's like finding their guts or like like being able to step into that uncomfortable spot like is is hard but but, but then that's the same with like documenting everything just being able to get the camera out when you're like oh, i don't know you can kind of convince yourself to not use it yeah, yeah. Well, how do you, like, do you do anything in particular to sort of get over that, like, uncomfortableness of, like, filming in public? Like, say you, you just shot the Buskers Festival. Yeah. Surrounded by lots of people. Not phased whatsoever Not phased. Is there. that because it's work, though? Yeah, Yeah, totally. I'm the same. Totally. But if it's personal, it's like, <laughs> everyone's looking at me. <laughs> yeah. I'm that weird dude with the camera. And even doing Instagram, like, I was in the Sir Ian McKellen, is it Peter McKellen? Uh, Ian McKellen, uh, whatever, box at the Isaac Theatre Royal and put it on my stories and I was like hey guys like taking the piss about being in this I was storing my gear in there but I was just like trying to be fancy to be and I could see bougie. people in the crowd looking at me like and pointing me like what the hell is that guy doing and I was like oh shit <laughs> like I kind of semi freaked out but I'm like actually who cares like yeah that's yeah it's a weird one but um but I think doing it more is key and even Instagram stories is great like being a someone else in the room and you just pick up your phone and start talking about whatever you need to talk about mm. that's all just like reps and reps and reps and reps and it helps so much and especially like if you commit to going on trips recently we went up to Palmerston North for a, like a CrossFit trip and there was two of us filming and I was walking around and just like it was work in a way so like I just interview athletes and talked and I felt so comfortable um, and every other gym was like, what the hell? They've got a freaking yeah. media team? Like it was, yeah. It was, but then as soon fun. as it comes to anything personal, it gets a little bit weird, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we walked into, we went and shot a video. Oh, yeah, talk me through for, that. We went and shot a video for Marketing Win Monday at, at BP. And it's like, if I was just randomly filming for a, a vlog or whatever for myself, I'd be a little bit hesitant walking in there with camera. Walk in there, full steam, start filming. David's a little bit, hesitant which is fair enough because he's like the star of the show so it's like i'm pointing a camera at him it can look a little bit weird yeah and then the the store manager comes over and he's like what are you guys doing and we're like yeah. well we may as well just expl- like we're making this video it's marketing win monday blah 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 <laughs> yeah. and it was just a little bit awkward and then he was like oh it's all good we just need to make sure you're not competition 
We're like, um, well, we're, we're definitely not. We're actually like endorsing you guys. Yeah. And he was like, sweet. And then we just went on our merry way and we're like, right, let's get the hell out of yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you say a little bit uncomfortable, I'll um, correct you with uh, <laughs> extremely discomfortable, God. uncomfortable. <laughs> I uh, completely panicked and just got into a real pickle. Like, just uh, just a mess. It can get, it can get weird. Yeah, but yeah. I, I love what you said about doing the reps there. That's, uh, that's really yeah. quite interesting. And I think also with... Um, those types of situations like we could have taken that opportunity and been like hey bp how about a sponsored post you know definitely oh that's and that's the thing it's like that's another situation where you could like be like uh it's awkward to ask them this or it's awkward to but then sometimes you just gotta and and this happens with me i've got a few friends who are just like whatever don't Mm -hmm. don't bat an island at doing that Mm -hmm. and i'm like that's so awkward but 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 it makes awesome. them it's it's promotion and it's uh totally it's content so like if we had have been uh on the front foot and like gone up to him previously said hey look is it cool here's what we're um wanting to do is this all right you know whether he has the ability to authorize that yeah, like all, all we want is two free coffees you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's nothing major but, but i mean who knows we could have got wild i mean bp yeah. is a client yeah. like yeah. You, you know crazier things can happen right totally so oh, agreed. what was I gonna go? I had something to talk about when you were mentioning about this. This was great. Um, pondering, pondering, pondering. Noise, noise, noise. Filming um, in public. Filming yeah. in public. Oh man, that's no, so escaped me, and it's gonna come back in like uh, ten minutes' time when we were just bantering afterwards. So I ask a question for you then. Keep, oh, keep things rolling. You can ask me a question. What are you working <laughs> on? Oh, <laughs> who show is this? What are you What are you working on at the moment? Oh my gosh. Uh, so obviously heaps of stuff with the the gym that I work alongside with. Um, they've got yeah heaps heaps going on like a big Easter training camp where athletes from all over New Zealand and Australia are coming in. So we're like building some like material video stuff around that to put that out there. And, and there's probably uh, maybe fifty percent of the allocated tickets are booked, but we're just going to fill that up. So I'm just chopping some stuff up there uh at the gym we do like well just started to do these behind the scenes kind of long form videos they're just uh filming of like a saturday session at the gym where they just do a bark at load of work and banter in between so um i'm chopping up one of those that we want to get out by wednesday thursday kind of each each week um but i'm going to be working alongside callum which is another guy at the gym and kind of passing the buck on to him on this one and getting him to kind of give it a go because i've done them all so far and he wants to learn more about that so um, i'm going to help him with that um obviously heaps of podcast stuff a few bread and circus uh buskers things um like this is classic me like i had to film on sunday for a chunk of the day and all the footage was for was for the end of festival recap i'm just building a bank for the recap like the big big video um but then i downloaded all the footage and i think it was last night i was just looking through and i'm like i'm just gonna play around with a little bit of this stuff and just i want to pick a track and i want to like awkwardly do too many sound effects like i want to find more because i i never sound design anything so i was like i'm gonna like challenge gonna, myself to hand. i was gonna use no music that was my goal but then eventually i was like oh no i want to put something in here um and i just chopped up this clip that i'm super like super proud of that i love because i never put i'm struggling to put things on instagram i just never like feel like doing it um and i'm like yeah this is no pressure this was no client project really in a way like it was but it wasn't um and they're probably going to be stoked with it and because i was stoked with it because i just got free reign to do whatever i wanted you know um yeah so probably playing around with a, l- a little bit of that the last weekend is this weekend so i'm filming a bunch this weekend um and what else do i have in the pipeline i'm doing some stuff with chanui the uh, tea slash biscuit brand and working alongside them and there is probably something else that i missed but yeah sweet yeah. busy yeah very busy should we uh nice. have we got a couple of minutes to talk about podcasting as a oh, business oh okay Oh, let's do it. Yeah, yeah cover it. I um, I've noticed that a lot of people. You guys are taking the rain. Sorry, and I yeah. love it. I love it. Keep going. <laughs> so I've, I feel bad for asking questions because I was do like, oh, I, I don't, don't know. know if I'm like chewing up your valuable podcasting time, no, and if mate. you've already talked about this before. Or no, 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 you're uh, good. It's, it's content, con- con- man. So this is great. <laughs> okay, keep going. Yeah, yep. so the podcasting. I've noticed a few people jumping on board lately in the last couple of months, and um, you know, we've talked about the equipment part of it. And what do you, what do you what have you learned so far by running the podcast? Good yeah. question. Um, the question's coming back to me, and I'm loving it. Um, I oh, I'm just loving the whole the whole process. It's like um, I kind of 
link it to when Gary V talks about TikTok and he's like, you should be using TikTok to a general everyday business owner. Mm-hmm. Um, not because I want you to go TikTok viral, but because you're consuming TikTok slash making TikToks. You may learn something about the, mm. the, the creation process that could help you in two years time when there's some other platform. So for me, it's kind of kind of like that with podcasting. Like it is putting in the reps and it's just like getting more comfortable speaking to different people. I love the, the I love consuming podcasts. So it's been fun just to making them like to make them, but also having opportunities to speak to different people, connect with different audiences. I'm loving um, like in terms of, like uh yeah i yeah i guess and for me i wanted i wanted a challenge this year so i was like let's dive deeper into the podcast and do these like solo session shorter just me talking about whatever um so i'm like trying to just put out a bunch more so but in terms of a business business perspective i think it's uh, it does open doors to people who may never have seen me before Mm -hmm. purely because i'm bouncing around a, a few people's different audiences maybe passing them some video footage maybe just talking about interesting topics and and yeah doing stuff like that i don't know i love it that's my that's my two cents yeah yeah i think uh, i can definitely see a, a podcast in our future i think it's uh we've got the gear we got we do have the gear we've got the gear, oh, got the gear. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> wait, do we, wait do we have the gear, we can, we got the gear. <laughs> this right. afternoon okay yeah fpv podcast yeah, that's <laughs> after the, that's after we search fpv <laughs> yeah. it's a busy day um yep what are you uh, so what are your two cents on it you you're a fan and you're thinking maybe you'll kick one off yeah, I mean, we've um, had a series in the past, Meet the Business Tuesday, which yes. has been a video-based content series, yep. and it's um, been really hard keeping it under an acceptable amount of time. Yep. You know, it's been really hard keeping it under 10 minutes, yep. um, purely based on, like, it's an interview, right? So it's really hard to, especially if you're not editing it, you know, like if you go on freestyle, it's hard to confine it to 10 minutes. So personally, I, I'm unlikely to watch a video that's 10 minutes or longer. And so podcast, it's totally fine, right? If it's quality content yeah yep. absolutely um yeah just you know even listening to your solo sessions while walking or running it's uh it's cool yeah it's yeah, good. yeah 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 totally yeah um something that's just popped up into my my brain it's probably not what i was thinking of but um in terms of timing for a video man we've bounced around a lot but it's good like i was under the impression that i'm like i want fast 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 i want it to be 10 seconds uh, you know like people have short attention spans and i've heard this on other videos and other podcasts where they're like i feel like it's either 15 seconds or three hours like that people will be obsessed with a movie or whatever for like there's this mm. middle kind of gap that's kind of faded away or but but what's with that and, and like I'm, I'm interested in picking that apart a little bit um but in terms of video content like i mentioned at the gym we're doing these behind the scenes longer form videos like the one we put out last week was like 24 minutes right and people were watching it and like and and i guess it's because when we look at other some of the top crossfit crossfit teams in the world are putting out these behind the scenes videos that are pretty shitty in my like video perspective i'm like oh this is terrible but people are loving it and they're consuming it and it's like Mm. There's only so much of like a funky track chopped up with, with like edit that you can watch. And so it's just like they want to see athletes eating their banana before they go out. Then they want to see them talking about the event. Then they want to see, you know, they want to see more and more. And that's like my initial inspiration for like me wanting to pretty much do that, but for the All Blacks. That was like one of the my mm. like first goals. I remember that. Even the Crusaders, I'm like, man, we just need, they just need more content. Mm-hmm. And then and, and it can be more rough behind the scenes stuff of like the lads bantering and teaching each other handshakes they're going to do when they score a try. Like, that is cool. Yeah. And people would love that. Yeah. And so I'm seeing that happen in the CrossFit space where they're putting out more and more longer form stuff that people are, are into. And so we're having a bit of play with that. It's fun to edit because it's not, I'm not used to it at all. I'm like, oh, oh, chop, let's freaking like do everything. But then in sections like uh, one of the coaches call me, he's talking about something and maybe I'm not interested in that. But then like there'll be people up north or people overseas that are really interested in the coach's perspective. And then uh, like we're at a competition and then some of the people were speaking and it was their first time. Some it was like 50th competition. And um, like there's an athlete at the gym called Marnie and she's like a absolute weapon. She's a beast. Um, and there's a bit where I pull her aside and we're sitting in this room and I'm talking to her about competition and how she feels. And then someone, because I wanted to know her perspective because I'm so interested. And then some people watch that and said, oh, I wish you'd spoken more. I wanted to hear how you were feeling then. And I'm like, man, I didn't think, like, you don't know what, you know, like uh, what other people were after. So it was, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to play with that and, and, and create characters and do more of like a, it's more of like cheer, like I say, but it's like a rough, 
rough uh, docu series in a way, where yeah. it's like telling athletes' stories as they go through their training and all the highs and lows and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's it's all got to do with kind of the characters that you have in in your videos, and I guess that's what people sort of get drawn to the most. Is mm. it's actually the content's usually secondary. It's well, not. It's yeah. You know, you know what I mean. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you're interested in the characters, not like the pretty B-roll footage, right? Mm, yeah. Um. So yeah, that that's probably why a lot of people find that stuff interesting. Yeah, and even like some of the wide shots, we're on a gimbal and we're shooting like 16 mil, like nice and wide, and we're just walking around the gym. And I was like, okay, like speed that up or whatever, like thinking. And then the more you watch that, like we've done a few edits recently where it's start to finish in a workout, and one of us is just walking around filming people. And I'm like, man, the, the music's it, like, like maybe you put a cool track to it, and you're just watching. Oh, what's this athlete doing? What's that athlete doing? And you just like end up like, oh my gosh, I've watched this for five minutes, and it's like, what, what the hell? It's just, it's, it's really interesting. It's just because I'm the the guy who's like, wanted to skip after 20 seconds, but because we're shooting at a, let's say a wider uh, field of view and there's so much going on you can just kind of bounce around and there's something else there's someone struggling over there there's someone actually smashing over there and it's like it just kind of keeps you going like keeps you entertained well, that's interesting I think it's interesting to because obviously we all, ha- all we all have perspectives on what we find interesting and what mm. we don't yeah but everyone's totally different so yeah. it's like yeah you could watch someone might watch that 15 minute video and be like holy shit this was sick yeah and someone be like nope yeah, not, not for me. Totally. But you never know who 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 that content's gonna suit. Totally. Yeah. Totally. But then and then like uh, going forward with our, you know, we're talking way too much about CrossFit, but um, going forward with these longer form videos, <laughs> good plug. The people who are gonna watch a behind the scenes that goes for fifteen to twenty minutes, and they let's say they live in New Zealand or Australia, which is like most of the people that we connect with, um, they'll probably be going to the same like big competitions that we're going to be going to this year um, then they can see these athletes in person or like banter to them or see how they're training throughout the year they're like in deep into CrossFit and they love it and then so they're more likely going to be the people who are going to follow us along then they're going to subscribe to our programming which we do and all that sort of stuff so it just kind of I don't know I just feel like it's it's a it's a cool way to connect with the audience and find people who are really obsessed about CrossFit I guess is CrossFit like um is there like beef between gyms? Uh, depends. Yeah, I think I think there's some beef between some gyms, and lots of gyms just like love each other. Would yeah. you find that people are potentially watching your content to sort of spy on your athletes? I know that this is getting this is getting weird. No, no, no. But is, that, is that like something that probably you could could happen? Definitely, and that's what I wonder about. Like. Uh, there's this thing called uh, Six Four Training Systems, which is our like training methodology, and 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 it's more of like the so we pro- can program for competitive athletes, or like they could be anywhere in the world, and they could do this programming. And so some of our Instagram posts are the workouts that we're doing. And so um, I'm like, oh, this is the secret sauce. Like mm. you don't want to share that, but you kind of do it at the same time because yeah. if I'm in France and I'm just training and I see this and I'm like, oh, I'll give that a go. And that's kind of, if you do that a couple of times, you may get hooked and, and you may want to sign up. But then at the same time, if I'm like Greg and I run a gym and uh, I don't know, some, somewhere else. Yeah. Um, yeah. You may be using those opportunities to like spy, but then I guess uh, I'm not too worried about it to be yeah. honest. And I yeah, don't think yeah, the coaches yeah. are. They're like, well, let them spy in a way and it's like they can see what, what's going on and they just be like damn I need out of my game which is which will be, be good for everyone I guess but yeah, yeah. cool cool yeah alright let's wrap it up lads um, thanks thanks for coming on yeah, I love you. how we kind of the flow of the, the podcast for those listening slash watching was uh, me trying to trying to run the ship and then uh, just <laughs> took my hands off the wheel for a moment there and <laughs> let the boys steer and it was bloody brilliant um, thanks for that guys it was just a good genuine wee chat I feel like I need a second coffee for the day so let's get that sorted um, thanks thanks for by thanks uh, very much yeah great Good. being on the show yeah thanks for having us cheers. enjoyed as always <laughs> cheers thanks if you are liking the sound of this podcast then hang around if you want to check us out on Instagram we are at quality antics podcast or if you want to flick us an email we are quality antics podcast at gmail.com and if you could check us a review we would bloody love it thanks so much you have a good day and cheers <laughs>